Hello and welcome to another episode of Wheels Boy Lockdown Chat, the show where we spend our time locked down here in Shanghai, China, discussing topics related to the Chinese car industry. My guests for today's show, as they so often are, are Mr. Elliot Richards, who you will know from the Fully Charged show, as well as his own channel, China Driver. Welcome, Elliot. Hello again. Hello again. And then uh, Mr. Mark Andrews, veteran automotive journalist here in China. He writes for publications including Auto Car in the UK. You can see a lot of what he's written, a lot of his great articles by going to his website, which you can see uh, underneath his little box there. Welcome, Mark. Good to be back. Good to have you. So today's topic, last time we did a video, which I think we enjoyed and our fans enjoyed, where we did a little debate about what was the best mini electric car here in China. So basically the cheapest electric cars you can get, kind of the cheapest cars you can get as far as I'm aware. Um, instead, for this video, we're going to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. We are going to be discussing what is the top or our pick for the best um, luxury EV SUV here in China. So the biggest, the most expensive uh, electric SUVs that you can get. So first, we're going to start by introducing our three contestants. Mark, why don't you begin? I'm sorry, rather, Elliot. We're flipping it this time. I got myself confused. Last time I started, this time Elliot is going to start. Elliot, what have you brought for the contest? I have bought the big daddy of all EV SUVs. I think one of the very first proper luxury EVs. It's obviously the Neo ES8 and really was the start of a... Uh, so far, a very successful kind of um, a list of models that the, the company have brought out. Um, and it's one of the first EVs that I drove and was just blown away by. Um, so, yeah, I've got the Neo ES8. Okay, thank you very much. So um, I should mention that a lot of these photos, especially the photos of the ES8 and the Hongqi EHS9, uh, spoiler alert, that's that's my contestant, um, were taken by our own Mark Andrews. Thank you very Mark for very much, Mark, for, for providing these very nice photos. And speaking of Mark, why don't you tell us about your contestant? Well, mine is the Hi-Fi X. And this is really quite a car. And Currently, it's one of the best sellers in China of all cars priced around about 500,000 or more. It sells more than often the Porsche Taycan. This is true. The numbers do not lie. The, the Hi-Fi X, and I, I think um, Mark is the only one among us who has driven all of the contestants for today. Um, I know... Yeah, there's the EHS9. That's, I'll talk about that in a moment. I myself have driven the EHS9 and the Hi-Fi X. I've never driven the ES8, but I've driven an EC6, which there's not that much of a difference as far as I know. <laughs> um, but uh, And then Elliot, of course, has driven the uh, ES8 and the Hi-Fi X, but not the EHS9. So he's going to have to take my word for how fantastic it is. Uh, and Mark's, of course, because I'm sure he'll back me up. But again, there is my contestant, the um, Hongqi, not Neo, <laughs> the Hongqi EHS9. I mean... Look at it. Need I say more? We will. We I'd will rather see. not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I am. I'm excited for the for the initial the next the uh, thing we're going to be talking about, which is the first category by which we'll be judging these vehicles. There are going to be five categories, just as there was with the mini electric car: the uh, exterior styling, interior styling, performance, range, and value. So I'm very excited to get to our first category of value. But what what was that, Elliot? Did I did you say you wanted a wrist check? Okay, thank you. Elliot requested that we get... Uh, so first, uh, many people know that I am actively trying to turn the Wheels Boy channel into a half watch, half car channel. So I will uh, listen to Elliot's request for this. Is I'm wearing a Seiko SKX009 on a nice uh, Uncle Seiko blue waffle strap. Very nice piece. Uh, anybody wearing anything? Uh, Elliot has left the chat. Elliot has left... Okay, well, Mark... <laughs> I'm wearing clothes. Mark's wearing clothes? All right. Well, guys, better luck next time. I guess I'm the winner of the watch category for today's video. But um, let us begin. Let's continue to our first category, which is exterior styling. So for exterior styling and interior styling, there will be a vote. We are going to go. It is subjective, of course. You cannot vote for your own choice. You must vote for one of the other two choices. Elliot, why don't you start us off by telling us why you think the design of the ES8 is worthy of the win? So just just take it back to 2018, I think this was released. Um, this was, you know, a brand new 
brand uh no one had seen or heard of neo um you know outside of kind of automotive circles and this was their first full-on you know ev and it was very striking looking um and i i do think it looks quite good although i do think this es8 is slightly aging now i think it needs a bit of a refresh um given like the direction they're going in but it's a very striking design um you know it's big on the road it's got a lot of presence um, and it really showed kind of the design direction that Neo wanted to go in. I still, I still like this car. Still like the design of it. Um, it. Don't know if it hides its its lump very well, as in its its size, its mass. Um, but it's a very calm and thought out design, which was quite unusual for you know a new Chinese brand to be kind of quite muted in, in design. So I, I I really still quite like this. Um. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I, I, I do like the way that the Neo models look. I think that when they debuted, they definitely had a little bit more pizzazz. And so we've now moved on a little bit. Um, mm. But uh, I will say that the um, and, 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 and honestly, among this, these three contestants, it's kind of hard to stand out. <laughs> We're bringing we're bringing some pretty bold designs here, so I'm afraid the ES8 is. I would say it's probably the most tra the most traditional looking. Is that fair? I mean, it's the least it's the least aggressively styled. How about that? It's the most subtle. Okay, that's a very flattering way to put it. That's a very flattering way to put it. Speaking of designs, Mark, why don't you tell us about the Hi-Fi X? Okay, first of all, I'm going to talk about why it is different to both the Neo and the Hongqi. The Neo and the Hongqi both could really be ICE cars. Um, there's nothing about them that necessarily says EV, uh, the dimensions particularly. With the uh, Hi-Fi X, it's very much an EV. You can't, you couldn't make a fuel car in that way. They describe it as a shooting cross. Now, when they launched it, it was actually called originally, well, the di design they first showed, it was called the Hi-Fi 1 at that point, and then became the Hi-Fi X when it reached production. So I had a word with the designer, James Shear, and they were, this is obviously, I think, a lot of PR talk, but they were claiming that there are 69 styles of design when it comes to car. Nice. And that they were creating a 70th. And they were, as I said, claiming it was called a shooting cross. Now, what a lot of people say is that the Hi-Fi X basically looks the same as the Faraday Future FF91. Yeah, it does to some extent, but I think that's because it's created a new style for EVs of um, for an SUV style EV. Um, so I don't think it's any different to say having a um, say a Ford Mondeo versus a um, what they called um, what's the um, Vauxhall Opal car called? That's the equivalent. Vectra. Vec no, the Vectra is the old one. What's Cavalier. the new one? Oh, <laughs> Cavalier. <laughs> Cavalier. Called? No, Insignia? that's even older. Insignia? Uh, Insignia, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's basically like saying um, both of them are sedan shapes, uh, so they're actually one is the copy of another. Well, I don't think that's really the case. So I would say the Hi-Fi X is really something quite unique when it comes to its looks. Do you think it's an SUV or an MPV? Because I think it looks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more like an MPV. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elliot. That is a good, that's a good question, but I would say it's more SUV than MPV. Mm. But as I said, I think it is really a kind of unique style. So as they say, a shooting cross. And I, I will give credit where credit is due. Let's get the rear view there. You guys can see, I mean, it's got, it's got the, it's got the wild, uh, let's go back to the front really quick. It's got the wild matrix uh, LED headlights or not headlights, but really kind of lower light display there that can, as you saw in, in, in our video review, it, it can project images on the ground in front of it. It can display a, a pedestrian walking as it can also do in the, uh, and display things in the rear. One thing you told me, uh, Mark, which I didn't realize 
when I test drove the car, and I rather would have included it in the video, was that it can indicate a U-turn if you if yeah, you that's the, correct. Yes, if you hit the yeah. turn signal, what three times? I, I think it's twice, but twice. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, three but, times um, would make you, any you, sense. You, <laughs> you, you um, hit it some in some way, and then it will sh uh, signal a U-turn on mm -hmm. its indicator lights. Yeah, which is quite a cool trick. Right. One thing you should notice, though, about the design is the A pillar is actually very far forward compared with a lot of conventional yeah. designs. Which makes it um, hard and, as hell to drive, for the record. I mean, I, 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 I don't I, think it does. I felt like I felt like uh, if I remember from my review, I was saying that it, it, it I could not tell. I couldn't feel like could tell where the corners were. If it made me, it, I'm sure I could get used to it. But for the you know four or five days or whatever that I had it, I felt like it, it, the corners felt they're definitely closer to you, which in theory makes it easier to negotiate things once you figure out where they are. But I just felt like it was a little harder to see. I don't know. For me, what driving the cars, I found both the EHS-9 and the ES-8 huge. Mm. Obviously, they're all of a similar bulk, but driving the Hi-Fi X, it, you just don't see, don't feel that bulk um, of the other two that I felt anyway, certainly. I, I think, that, I I think the, the four-wheel steering mm. helps. But, but exactly. Hopefully. Parking and everything in this one is mm. the easiest. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk. We can touch more on the driving stuff and performance category, but I will support both of what you guys are saying, which is that it definitely hides its mass. And again, when we'll get to performance, when we get to performance. We'll talk about rear wheel steer, which is is available in some of these. But also, Mark, I mean, come on. What's what's the what's the the main thing about the Hi Fi X? Those absolutely um. buck wild doors. I mean, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. There's a reason, as you can uh, see, there's a reason that yeah. there's a reason. The that, NT like, doors. The, I'm the NT doors. So, um, NT? NT. That's what they call them. NT doors. Which and so, for... not traditional? No I, no. no idea what it stands for. Um, well, it obviously stands for something, I'm sure. But um, so, so it's basically a dual opening door mm -hmm. for the rear passengers. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously it's a gimmick to some extent, but it's also a very cool feature as well. It, it is, it is. I mean, I will tell you that there is no car that we have ever filmed that got as much attention as this one, doors open or doors closed. I think I'm giving away where my vote is going to land here, but <laughs> there is no vehicle. I mean, when we, I, I, ne I never got tired and I don't know that I would get tired as an owner of this car, parking it. And then when people were just walking by, just like hitting, the, when I finally figured out the insanely annoying fob, which I think all of us mm -hmm. who have driven it absolutely found the, I think Elliot and I talked at length about how much we hated the fob. And I told <laughs> people from Hi-Fi, for the record, <clears throat> I met with somebody when I was returning the car and they go, what did you think about it? And I was like, here's what I thought. The only, the bad thing, the thing I want to say is, can you never use this fob again? Um, apparently people use the app a lot, but the point is you can use the fob and just pop them all open at once. And yeah. it is quite the show, you know, and, and in this picture, it doesn't actually accurately reflect it because you can even open the rear. It opens the, the trunk as well or the boot. Um, and so <laughs> um, and so it's 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 pretty amazing. But I must do my best to represent my choice. And I am very happy to do so. And that is the one, the only Hongqi EHS-9. Now, the EHS-9 Listen, subtlety, you use the phrase subtlety, Elliot, and I just want to say mm -hmm. not everybody wants subtlety when it comes to design. Some people want to be hit in the face with a hammer, and the EHS-9 is a, is a hammer. It, it, it smacks you straight in the face with its uh, bold, uh, some would say fantastic road presence. You're, never, you're not going to be able to look away if you see this thing coming down the road. Not the least reason is that that red streak down the middle of the grill, well, that lights up. Of course, um, representing the red flag motif, which is what Hong Chi means in English. Um, it is not a subtle vehicle by any means, but again, I think that some those those bold people among us, all right. If you'll let me have a beer commercial for a moment here, the bold among us choose bold flavors and bold flavors like the Hong Chi EHS Nine. However, I will also say that it manages, and I'm being no joke here, I really love the profile of this car. If you look at the side of it, 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 it manages a level of elegance that does not make any sense for such a huge, monstrous vehicle. It's 5.2, it's, I double checked, it is the largest of the uh, three contestants. 
um, larger than Mark's by, I think, one centimeter. Um, <laughs> but you have a longer wheelbase. Uh, but it manages to have a level of elegance that I found genuinely impressive. The, the thing, um, I love the chrome trim. Um, this is very American of me, but the chrome trim that runs along the top of the greenhouse and then when it swoops and goes up that C pillar there, it is, oh, it's like a, something you'd see on like a power boat or a yacht or something like that. It, it's, it's super cool. It's super kind of classic. Um, I really do love the way this car looks all the way to the rear end, which I think does a great job. I love the way that the taillights kind of go deeply into the rear quarter panel there. I think they're awesome, especially when they're lit up. I need to, I should have a photo of that, but you know, I, I could wax nostalgic about my, my love for the EHS 9's design all day long, but it's time for us to have a vote on our first category. Um, we will start with Elliot because he was the first contestant. Elliot, of the Hi-Fi X and the EHS 9, where's your vote going to go? I mean, this is pretty obvious, isn't it? It's got to be the Hi-Fi X. I just want to say one thing about the uh, the Hongqi. I'll go back. You know, someone someone like BMW has done that car a great favor like the bmw 5 series you said you know subtlety compared to the uh sorry 7 series yeah that is very subtle compared to the new 7 series yeah. so yeah. that this actually is starting to look much much better but my vote is going for the hi-fi x uh a friend of mine who is a person of of of, of great means who is someone who would very much be in the market for a a 7 series is who currently drives a five series sent me the photos of the seven series the new one and was like is this a joke <laughs> and we we it was and i thought it i thought it was some sort of you know like a like a meme one of those memes about how joking about how bmw girls get too big but whatever um you know pot kettle black i'm standing here defending the ehs9 um <laughs> so next let's talk about uh mark what is your vote for this category the ehs9 or the esa oh good mm. question um I like both of them to an extent. Um, I think probably though, I my vote probably has to go with the ES8. Yes. Ah, I heard E and I got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Don't choose subtlety, Mark. Don't choose subtlety. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, the vote's cast. I'm, I'm going to go with the Hi-Fi. Um, I think so the hi-fi is going to win this category because I, I really do think that it's especially in that orange color um, mm -hmm. It looks good. It's awesome. It's super cool. It's yeah, just very it's unique. Awesome. It's very unique yeah. And then there's the doors yeah. and stuff. So hi-fi yeah. wins in the exterior styling category, which brings us to our second category Interior styling again. This is a subjective category. We will each be able to vote, but you can't vote for your own car um, Now let's start with Elliot. Tell us about the ES8's interior I mean, design is so subjective, right? Um, but I think... Not a strong and, start. <laughs> no, but, you know, I do like how they've done this. This is, matches the exterior, right? It's a very calm, very kind of um, well thought out interior with good materials. Uh, it's very luxury, you know, got the massage seats. It's got reclining chair. It's got something, you know, that everyone kind of wants in a luxury car. It doesn't go beyond. I mean, the one thing it does have is normie. You know, everyone loves normie sometimes. Um, yeah, everybody. It's got two I've... very good quality screens. You know, all of the buttons, the, the the touch and the feel, everything is very good quality. The materials they use are pretty unique. The microfiber cloth and the ET7, they've got the Karoon material. So I think this is a, it ET7? might not be the... I know, we're on the ESA. Yeah, 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 don't, yeah, be bring, yeah. don't be bringing in other Neos. Don't be bringing in the new <laughs> Neos. <laughs> All right, this has got microfiber cloth then. Um, but I think that oh, I've lost my train of thought now. It's a good interior, okay? It's not going to blow anyone away. It doesn't go over the top with extra screens or anything like that. It's just a well thought out, good quality, a luxury interior. Um, I... <laughs> Well, no, it's, no, you know, if that I won't, I won't comment. I'll save my thoughts for 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 later on. Uh, Mark, tell us about the uh, Hi-Fi X, and there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Obviously, you got an asymmetrical dash there. Um, so, in fact, like the Neo, the passenger does not have a glove box. So, um, but with the Hi-Fi X, it's an asymmetrical dash, which I'm not 
can, I'm not sure if the Neo has an asymmetrical dash or not. It doesn't seem like um, it. I, I think that. so. There's a six-seater and a four-seater version of the Hi-Fi X. Obviously, with the front, you've got a lot of screenage there. Really? So you've got three screens, um, and that pretty much covers the whole dashboard. You've got very good materials. You've got Alcantara pretty much everywhere, leather. Um, in the second row, you have what they call commander seats, mm -hmm. and those are very comfortable. The third row is a little bit of a disappointment, I would say, compared with the rest of the car, and is actually a little bit of a weak spot when it comes to the Hi-Fi X. Um, there's a lot of space in the third row, but I don't think it's particularly easy to get into the third row. And also, it's kind of claustrophobic when you're in the third row because there are no side windows. They put Although, some... having said that, there is yeah. glass above you, and I'm guessing that generally the kind of people who are going to be sitting in there are probably kids who are most likely going to be playing on their phones or whatever, on devices. So the lack of side windows may not bother them too much. And it is comfortable when you are in the third seat, but as I said, it's claustrophobic due mm. to not having the windows. Um, one really cool thing with the um, Hi-Fi X, I'm not really sure you could actually call this an interior feature or not, but to open the hatch at the back, it projects a luggage icon on the floor which you then step on and it will then open so that you can load your luggage into the boot stroke trunk. I got to say, that didn't, really that, didn't, nice that didn't work very consistently feature. for me when I had the yeah, car. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's a nice feature. It's, it's anyway. a cool thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi-Fi has a lot of stuff that's like, that's a very cool, th that's a very cool thought. Mm. And then I used it and I was like, I, it works. It doesn't work as badly as I thought it would work. Um, but that was one where I was like, this, 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 this is in the circumstances in which you would want to be using that, which is assuming that you have something heavy in your arms, you want it to work every single time. And, and it wasn't for me, but please continue, Mark, if you have anything. Um, I think that's pretty much all I do have to say about the interior, actually. I mean, obviously the materials are very good. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go to something now, which is a completely oh, different gosh. flavor from my two competitors. Now, Can I turn off my screen? Most uh, I, no, I need sunglasses. You'd miss <laughs> out. You'd miss out on the amazingness that is the EHS. It's a, a strawberry explosion. <laughs> a burgundy, a burgundy explosion. A 1980s Cadillac. Exploded. Dropped red wine everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's it's like it's it's. I love it. I I I I I talked about it in my video. I do I do like it. It's very traditional. So basically, a lot of modern um, cars in this category, well, the car, certain, every car in this category, the ES8, the Hi-Fi X, they all kind of have like a, a clean technical um, feel to them. Modern. Very mo modern. Not everybody, again, <laughs> not everybody's into subtlety, not everybody's into modernity. Uh, sometimes we only like a touch of it, but uh, troglodytes like myself, Philistines, we like to have a little bit of touch of tradition, which is what you get with the EHS9. That means that you have that awesome um, wood there in between the seats there that you can see in the center console. Uh, very nice to touch. Uh, it looks like it comes straight off the deck of a yacht. Classy. Uh, the burgundy the burgundy color palette is, uh, yes, I think I said in my video that it looks like it comes straight out of a 1980s Cadillac, um, but not a knock against it. Uh, you do, however, get that modernity, though, because you get three 16.2-inch screens, as you can see, arrayed across that central dashboard. The UI, oh, and also the, I think that's a 9 or 10-inch screen down there in front of the transmission lever that um, is used to control features like the air conditioning and the seats and stuff. Um, speaking of that, you do have a traditional shift lever. Not everybody wants a little nubbin, like with your Neo. And uh, what is the hi-fi? Hi hi does the hi-fi doesn't it doesn't have a trend, doesn't have a, a shifter? I've forgotten. Let's go back and look. I've oh, forgotten. Yeah, really uh, oh yeah, it's got the hi-fi has the column shift, um, much like a Tesla or an X Um So I I do think that I I will say that the EHS9's interior it is there is there is a buyer for it. 
because not all of them want to step into step into some sort of iPhone universe. Some of them want to step into something that really feels like a little bit more of old school luxury. And I think that the EHS9 manages to strike a balance between the two. Um, but of course, this is a subjective category. We must have a vote. So Elliot, why don't you start? Are you going to vote for the Hi-Fi X or the EHS9? Again, an obvious choice. Uh, I mean, can I make one comment about the EHS9? I'll go back to it. It looks like a American country club in the 1980s with three TV screens showing like horse racing or low-grade <laughs> pornography. So in, for that, I'm going for the, the Hi-Fi X, not your country club interior. Is that the only reason? Well, I mean, look at it. It's horrific. No, I mean, is that the only reason you're going to vote for the Hi-Fi X? Yeah, because the Hi-Fi X, I mean, it's like the Neo, really. There's not much to it. But, the, I mean, this is horrific. <sighs> I... Sorry, Ethan. You're, the thing is, Elliot, and this says a lot about me, that description has only made me want to buy an EHS-9 even more. <laughs> because <laughs> it profile. does it does it does feel like it would it would be filled with cigarette smoke the haze of cigarette yeah. smoke you know um i love it i love it so uh that's that is elliot's vote he went for the hi-fi x how about you mark what are you gonna vote for right um the ehs9 the materials are terrible <laughs> granted granted they are not the materials as good. are really not good quality at all I would actually say with the ES8, I mean, the ES8 has got much better quality materials than the Hongqi. However, the Neo ES8 does not have as good quality materials as the new ET7. The ET7 mm. is so much a step up. I'm not saying the materials are bad in the ES8, but you really see the difference. At one point when I was doing the review of the ET7, to do my photography, I actually went in an ES8 to do car-to-car -car pictures. And I was sitting in this ES8, having just been an ET7, and like, whoa, there is a real downgrade in the, from going out of the ET7 into an ES8. You can really notice that the materials are not that as good. Did both have the Napa leather, do you think? Um, I think they did, yeah, from yeah, what I remember. I mean, just... certainly the ET7 did, and I think the ES8 I was in did, but I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, because something you've put um, previous... Oh, well, I'm sorry, you want to go ahead and you finish your vote, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, if the ES8 had the materials that the ET7 had, my vote would go for the Neo. However... For the no. risk of big sand like a parvenu, I think I'm going to vote for the EHS-9. I've lost a lot of respect for you today, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's just so different. And I, they've got a lot of bulls, basically, <laughs> designing that. The EHS-9. <laughs> for a man who needs or a person who needs 5.2 meters of vehicle to drag their absolute chutzpah with them yeah i mean they've got a lot of balls for designing it like that i mean it is well i don't think it's balls it's naivety well it, it's a visual explosion i'm not sure Commitment if it's really a one in a, to style in a good way though Commitment to what style Commitment to yeah, a, this is a, question. a style. <laughs> but I would say that it just does something. I'm so not sure if it does something. Makes me vomit. Point, mind you. Speaks to the heart. <laughs> Speaks to the heart, brother. That's oh, what dear. Controversial car. Uh, mm. Join me. Join me in the country club, Mark, watching low-grade pornography as Elliot would say. <laughs> um, I love it. All right. So that, that does mean that we have um, – oh, no. I'm sorry. It's my turn. Yeah, so yeah, we have a vote right. for the EHS-9, which I can't vote for. And then we have a vote for the Hi-Fi over the EHS-9. So I have to choose between the Hi-Fi and the ES-8. Now, some would say, say that my choice here is just to act as a spoiler so that the uh, Neo, uh, or rather the Hi-Fi doesn't win in two categories. But I genuinely, genuinely like the interior of the ES-8, and I'm going to explain why. I, I think the Hi-Fi does have great material quality. 
Um, I think that the screen and the UI and everything is is good. I, one of the great things about the Hi-Fi interior that I, Mark, I, I didn't hear you mention was the, the because of those crazy doors, the ingress and egress of that car is better than any vehicle I've mm. ever been in. To the second row, yes. No, the first row as well because they have the doors open ninety degrees. They open oh, right, fully right. open, and so getting well, in. Well, I'm that meaning car, more is the third row. Sure, the third, third row store. Third problem. third row is 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 a no go. I mean, the the third row of the EHS nine is legitimately quite good. Um, the I mean, you do not have a lot of features and stuff, but there's actual light coming into it, which the 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 Hi-Fi X doesn't have. But I I love. I like Neo interiors. So the EC6, I, I love that transmission knob. The As you guys can see, the viewers can see on the channel, those of you who haven't seen any video, video other footage of it, it's that little thing on the left side of the center console um, uh, below the screen next to the, the little knob that used for volume. Also awesome because it has a physical knob for volume, huge points, um, and for drive modes and stuff. Uh, but it's just such a great little intuitive thing. You just drop your hand, flick it forward, flick it back, Park is on the side with your on the side there. You can hit with your thumb. I really do like it. I also think that the Napa leather is very nice. Uh, Nomi, she can give she you know you know I can give you know, whatever she can come or go. I don't really care about Nomi. Seems to be much, optional but. actually anyway. It is optional. Mm -hmm. um, but I I will say I described the EC6 as the most luxurious um, what is it called um, EV I've ever driven at the time. And I still think that's true, even if, because luxury is not just about material qualities and stuff. That's obviously important. It's about design and ergonomics. And I think the ESA just, or just the Neo interiors in general. So um, that does mean that this category is a wash. However, we have one vote for each contestant, which I think speaks to our uh, strengths as automotive reviewers in picking contestants. So uh, a small hand, round of applause for each of us. Um, but that does bring us to our next category, which is performance. So this is one of the objective categories along with range. And so that means we're basically just going to go by the raw numbers. Who's got the most power and torque um, range again. We'll get into the batteries and packs and stuff a little bit later. But um, Elliot, why don't you start with your contestant? So the ES8 has a 0 to 100 kilometer an hour of 4.9 seconds, 725 newton meters of torque. Mm -hmm. Power? Mm -hmm. Well, horsepower. Well, kilowatts. Kilowatts or horsepowers, whatever. Oh, I didn't write that down. <laughs> what? <laughs> this guy's torque obsessed. I think yours is around three, 400. He's a talker. Uh, well, a it's talker. the 0 to 100 time that matters, right? So. It's true. It's true. So, um, yeah, we're all these all of these guys are, are well doing my mark you we'll get to that you actually have a single motor option on yours i think you may be the only one here that has a single motor option no does the hi-fi x they have a lower power option is that one not single I motor so. is it dual motor well I why don't you so. why don't you start by telling us a bit about the performance of the hi-fi x okay 440 kilowatts that's 590 horsepower split equally between a front and rear motor 820 newton meters 3.9 seconds, 0 to 100, 0 to 62 miles per hour. Top speed at 200 kilometers an hour, which is 124 miles per hour. You want to know the weight? Yes. Yes. Hold on. I've got my weight. 2,580 kilos. Oh, I'm, I'm 2,425. Well, remember, it's four-wheel steering. The only, I think the only one of the three that's got yeah. four-wheel steering. Uh, I have four wheel steering as well. I, be I believe I. Is there an wish. option for four wheel steering on Hongqing? I believe that has rear wheel steering. Maybe I can confirm that. I don't think it does as standard. There might be an option for it. You said yours was 2000, 2000 what again? Who? You, yours was Who? how much? How many kilos, Mark? Mine? Yeah. 2,580. <laughs> what a lightweight. So huh? it's two and a half tons. What a lightweight. Let's talk about mm. the EHS 9, all right? Uh, zero to 100 kilometers per hour, five seconds, whatever. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. eventually, what slowest Matt, one there. What not? I'm listen, it's not just about what's on paper. Um, even though I said this is subjective, it's not well, um, aerodynamics of a brick, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, a very, a very, a brick with a lot of road, points. an electric brick, oh, yeah, an electric okay. brick, yes. <laughs> so it comes with the two, two power level options 320 or 405 kilowatts. 
um, which is like 400 horsepower and 550 horsepower, I believe, in nearest makes no difference. Um, and then torque-wise, the larger or the more powerful version has 750 yeah, 750 newton meters. Because Elliot says yours is isn't the Marx is, is 850, right? Yeah, Marx is 820 yeah. by newton meters. Don't yeah. exaggerate. Um, but what I want to say, and why I think that the EHS nine is is uh, deserves consideration for the performance category, even though it doesn't necessarily have the raw numbers. So I think we guys keep this in mind. Mark, you've done this as well. There is something. I, and again, it, I love that Hong Chi stuck to a theme, and that theme is old school luxury. Because when you hit the accelerator on an EHS nine, it is like the slash smashing the throttle on a boat because it just goes, and the the prow, if you will, yeah. of this beautiful vessel rises in such a way as to make you feel like like some sort of king like figure who has just commanded the power to come forth. It is it is so dramatic. It is so satisfying. I never I got tired of it. I think that's due to their weight distribution. It, it, listen, <laughs> it's, it's not about weight distribution. It's about style and pizzazz Doesn't have that. drama. Uh, also, by the way, nice. it, weighs, it weighs 2,000. The heaviest version weighs 2,650 kilos. Um, and so it does the heaviest the and the slowest. Well, you say that like well, it's that's not, why like, it's the slowest. I was about to say you say that like it's counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs> How is it all heavy and also slow? True, uh, true. Mm. So again, sticking to the theme, but um, it does have air. All these cars have are, have air suspension. I believe at least available with air suspension. Yes, yeah. um, and they Damn. all ride very oh, wow. comfortably. I, I, I think mm -hmm. the the EHS nine. Um, we can talk a bit about because we've we've basically driven all the cars that are that are present, and we can talk about the ones we've driven. Of the three, again, the HS9. It's definitely old school luxury, which means that going through turns does she, does she wallow a bit? Yes, but again, it lets you feel the sense of occasion when you really throw it in there. These other cars, they're so flat. I don't want to drive a 911 GT3 when I have an SUV. I want I want something that gives me a sense of just wee whenever I turn around a corner. Um, you want uh you want that American 80s Cadillac feel when you're going to your country club, don't you? Wallowing around the corner like this. Yes. And you want to do it slowly. I want my <laughs> I want my golf buddies to be f ill by the time we get to the country club to watch sports. We'll take the hi-fi then. Is, is that really. how you actually win at golf then? Yes, exactly right. I, I will make sure that the best golf player, my the best person on my team who I'm playing against is going to be sitting in the backseat where you get the most physics, the, the worst of the physics from that car, uh, and, and that they're ill so they can, again, watch watch sports in a smoke-filled room. Um, but I, uh, I I do I do love the way the EHS 9 accelerates. I do find it to have a beautiful sense of occasion. But, of course, as, as I said before, even though the EHS9 is the winner in the hearts of the people, we are objectively here. I think we have to give the win to Mark because he's got the most power, the fastest zero to 100. The Hi-Fi X is legit, crazy fast. Um, I, I during in my review, it's scary. Yeah, it's 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 like spin the tires in sport mode. One of the things I actually liked about it, and what I found fun was it was a little bit, it was a little, it was more dramatic than you would expect. Um, in that. There really was some scrambling for traction when you take off in sport mode, just like full throttle launch, um, which is which is pretty fun. Um, but uh, yes, you know, got to give the win to the win to Mark there for that objective category. Another category that is objective is going to be our conversation about range. Now, I've done Elliot a favor by including this photo to make sure he remembers, not that he was going to forget the thing that the neo es8 has uh in its favor yeah so i mean range the whole range thing with the neo es8 is obviously slightly different from you guys because we have both battery swapping and neo power so range is, that, is what is neo power for those that don't know a neo power is you get st stuck somewhere you need a charge you you ring neo up and then come out with a van with a massive battery in the back and, and or they a generator. Charge have car. they gotten rid of all the generators I haven't seen one recently, so okay. I think maybe it used to be a diesel generator. <laughs> Correct in the back of a van, <laughs> and I think, I think for like the long distance, like they did a trip to Tibet. Maybe they used that one there. I'm not sure. They must have, right? Because there's no other way. Um, but that 
the interesting thing on the Neo website is they they say focus on the ride, not the range. So uh, I, I like that. I like that sentence. Um, so yeah, range. We have you know we've got different battery packs. The the most common are seventy kilowatt hour and the hundred kilowatt hour. The hundred kilowatt hour pack we get five hundred and eighty kilometers of range, um, which is not bad. It's not a huge huge amount. Um, well, and for I think the size the, of car, it's good. Yeah. And I think, and that's any DC range. And I think with the smaller pack, it's 400 kilometers of range, 70 kilometer hours, 400, 430. So, uh, yeah, like I said, focus on the ride, not the range, guys. Focus on the ride, not the range. So uh, the ES8 is bringing some not altogether uh, impressive numbers to that game, but I, obviously battery swapping is a pretty big advantage. Uh, Mark, talk to us about the Hi-Fi X. Yeah, so it's got a slightly smaller battery than the ES8. So it's 97 kilowatt hour. And on that, it does 550 kilometers, which is 342 miles NEDC. Uh, Electricity consumption is 17.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That well, that's so, the is that the that's the one for the, the the more powerful version. Is that the lowest one available? No, there is only there there is only one power version for the Hi Fi X, as far as I know. Yeah, it's different seat configurations, right? There's different seat configurations. So, You've got a six seater or a four seater. I but there's actually they, only three. There's only three yeah. versions of the Hi Fi X. Two of them are six seater, and there's the one that's the four seater. So uh, it's just to do with equipment, I, uh, as far as I know. I got nothing believe to do that with they, motors. Uh, well, I'm looking at it right now, and this is new. This is brand new, so I don't blame you for knowing this, but there is now a 220 kilowatt entry level, um, kilowatt okay. motor entry level version, 440, oh no, sorry, 410 newton meters of torque. That version offers, let me see, 630 kilometers okay. of range. Um, How much is that? Because I looked on Auto Home earlier today to get some of this information. It's 570,000 RMB. And then, of course, the six seater version. Well, oh, sorry, I thought more. that was the second hand one from what I was reading. Oh, no, no, no. Because no. they were talking about second hand cars from about 570,000 on uh, Auto Home. To be fair, I believe that. Uh, that um, to Mark, Mark Shredder, this is all in Chinese. Um, but this is, yes, this is. This is um, a yeah the entry level one this is brand new this came out quite in fact it came out um in january for march of 2022 okay um no, and that one has let me double check the battery capacity just so we're clear on that should be the same 97 mm. kilowatts i'm sure yeah yeah I, I i believe that to be the case i very um, much doubt they've made a diff- different that's battery true. pack but that's true um we'll go with that but um yeah so 630 you know what let's talk a little bit about the ehs9 because it just so happens that the EHS-9 for 2022 is available with a new, beautiful 120 kilowatt hour pack that delivers. It means that- it, well, that, no, but this isn't a <laughs> contest about, you know, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, though it should be those numbers aren't available for two of our contestants as far as I can find the ES-8 and the um, the um, EHS-9. I imagine that Hongji would do their best to cover those up. But um, what we do know... Calculate it. That's where mine came from. Ah, well, yours isn't, didn't come from the web, from Auto Home? Because it's right there on Auto Home as well. Um, so the 120 kilowatt hour battery, depending on the power level you choose, either the lower power level 320 kilowatts or the higher power level 405 kilowatts, it's 660 or 690 kilometers of NEDC range. Uh, when we tested it, there was only the 84 and the 99 kilowatt hour pack. But now... Um, it is available with this beefy 120. In fact, I think the only the 120 is available um, for 2022 models. Um, can also, you buy it now? Can you buy it now? Can you buy the vehicle at this moment? The 120 uh, kilometer battery. Because if you if you can't, then I'm going to add in my 150 kilowatt hour battery. Hold on. I don't me, know if that's going to be available for the year. Is it? Oh, well, I suppose it must be because that's be. the same time. For no, and starting November, it debuted in November of 2020. Okay. So, thank God, I was a little nervous about that for a second. Um, (laughs) But uh, I also want to point out, and this is just a cool design feature that some of you will will know from watching our review, that that awesome 
chrome sail panel or whatever you want to call it on the C pillar of the EHS-9 that I think is actually quite elegant. Um, it is also acts as a charge indicator. So when you plug the car in, the charge indicator, there's 10 little strips, of course, and so it indicates your power level charge uh, in 10% increments. And it's not that easy to see in, in full daylight, but I do think it's a cool, subtle uh, design element and huge credit. Well, a few subtle things about the car. <laughs> yes. Well, see, so you get both. You get subtlety and you get extreme design presence. Um, so uh, that's what, but if you go just by the stated ranges, I think I win. 690 kilometers. Anybody beat 690 kilometers? No. Now, I would say if there was a, if there's, if there's a second or third place, second place has to go to the, well, that's t technically, according to the numbers, the, the hi-fi would be second, right? But uh, I will give strong credit, uh, not the win, of course, strong credit to the uh, ES8, of course, and the Neo models because they have battery swapping. So mm -hmm. that is that is a strong consideration for buyers. But speaking of buyers, what matters the most is the holistic package. What matters the most as we come to the conclusion of the video is the value represented by these cars. Now, Elliot, why don't you uh, start by telling us what do you think is the value proposition for your car? Start with, for example, what's what's the what's the price range for the ESA? Well, the price is complicated because you can go for you know buying the battery or not buying the battery. So we'll mm -hmm. start at if you don't buy the battery. The most van like the cheapest ES8 you can get is four hundred and eight thousand RMB, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got to rent a battery for nine hundred and eighty RMB per month. Um, I'm going to convert now, that really you, quick to USD. Go on. Uh, if you if you go with a hundred kilowatt hour battery, uh, you have to add obviously about fifty eight thousand RMB, I think, uh, and the top of the range one is five hundred and sixty eight thousand RMB. So only ten thousand rmb less than the lowest hi-fi model so that's why they've probably done that that price so that's including yeah, the battery is it that's including battery yeah mm -hmm. um so i you know i think that you know with neo you're not just buying the car but you're buying the service you're buying uh the battery swapping you're buying the support you're buying you know you've got this whole package of things that you get with the car so although it might not be the fastest the biggest whatever you know that you've got the support there if you're buying it new if you're buying it secondhand, you don't. Um, and I think that you know, the company does a lot to take care of its owners. Um, so I, I do think that what you get for your money, um, especially with that battery swapping, is probably, in my eyes, would be the winner out of these three. Okay. Okay. Mark, tell us what do you think is the... Oh, sorry. Really quickly, I did the calculations. That's about a little over 62,000 US dollars all the way up to about... Uh, 85,000 US dollars from the cheapest to the most expensive ES8. Mark, what do you think about the Hi-Fi X? Where's the value proposition of the Hi-Fi X? Well, price range. So what did you say with the two the two wheel drive was? Was it 570,000? 570,000 RMB, which, right, okay. which is almost the exact same. Is that rear wheel drive, by the way? Uh, I believe that to be the case. Let me double check while, right, you, that would while make you continue sense, to anyway. talk. Yeah, so with the four-wheel drive versions, um, start at 620,000. And you've got, with the six-seater, you've got either a 620,000 or a 680,000 version. But then if you really want to go the whole hog, you go for the four seats, and that is a mouth, well, eye-watering, eye rather, 800,000. Which is the equivalent of, just for the record, $120,000. Yeah, very dollars. very expensive. Yes, but your, your starting price, by the way, your five hundred seventy thousand RMB is almost the exact same as the top price for the. So it's the exact almost the exact same price as the most expensive ES eight. So obviously, with the car, you get something that is pretty much unlike anything else on the road, and in a very modern way not like the ehs 9 which yes it's certainly got presence i'm not denying that but i would say with the hi-fi x it's a head turner in a good way i i, I don't like the shade you're throwing it indicating somehow that the <laughs> ehs 9 is a head turner in a bad way i'm just gonna let that slide um, it's the ehs 9 turns heads but 
it's the more like heads. it's something that's hit you in the face. <laughs> um, so. That's why you're turning your head. That's what I'm saying. It's a hammer. Yeah. Bludgeon, <clears throat> bludgeon your your opponents, and your opponents are everyone else. Yeah. Bludgeon them. Bludgeon your eyes. Um, <laughs> so, um, EHS nine. Okay. Uh, prices range from about eighty nine thousand to a hundred and twenty ish thousand dollars. Let me double check because I want to make sure I'm correct on that. Um, yes, actually eighty nine thousand to one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. Just topping out slightly under the um, Hi Fi X. I do want to say that the both the the EHS nine comes in not not two variants, four and six seater, but four, six, and seven seater. The one we tested, I believe, was a seven seater, whereas the Hi Fi X only four and six, and the ESA only um, six and six, six and, and seven. seven. Yes. Yeah. So utilitarian, please come on. Um, but uh, you know, you're getting a lot of battery for that. You're getting a lot of range. Uh, you're getting just, and you just can't overstate the amount of style. I will also say that the the entry level um, ES or sorry EHS nine has 320 kilowatts. It's a full 100 kilowatts more power than the entry level Hi Fi X, which is the 220 kilowatt single motor. Which, by the way, is rear. It's rear motor, single rear motor. Um, so I think there is, I think there is some value to be found there. Um, but we do need to, you know, kind of have a vote. Let me really quickly, so we know what's at stake here. Let's tally up the votes. So exterior styling went, I think, to the Hi Fi X, right? Yes, Hi Fi X. Interior styling, a well-deserved win for the um, for the what for the it was for the it was a draw. It was a draw, yeah. So yeah, it was a draw. One point for the Hi Fi X. Um, performance went to the Hi Fi X, so that's two points for the Hi Fi X. And then range, your man over here of the EHS nine, so that's uh, two points for the Hi Fi X, one point for the EHS nine, and unfortunately, so far. No points for Elliot and his ESA. Um, but the value, let's have a vote really quickly. Let's try to make them decide on this. Will there be a tie? <laughs> or will or will the Hi-Fi X uh, take the win? Uh, Elliot, what would you say of the three competitors, other than your own, of course, uh, of the Hi-Fi X and the EHS9, which do you think represents the best value? Oh, gosh. That's, I wish I could pick the Neo here because it would be the best value for me. Um I'm going to decide the best value. Uh, what do you I think would go most with for your the, money? And by, I think the technical term is most grill for your money. I don't want grill for my money. I th I don't know. It's that's a really hard He's one. Not buying a steak. <laughs> I think I don't want an ugly car. It doesn't. It's just not good value with all those trashy materials on the inside. Sounds like a vote I, for the EH EHS nine. <laughs> <laughs> hi fi all right, Although the, all right. the technology is too complicated for its own good okay one vote for the for the uh hi fi mark ehs9 or es8 value what do you think definitely the neo i i think the hongqi is overpriced for what mm. it is actually i just don't see that the prices represent the quality of materials um I, I don't I don't I can understand completely why somebody would buy a whole cheap. Um thank you. <laughs> it's it's not necessarily a bad car by any means. But I feel that with both the Hi-Fi X and the Neo, the quality of the materials are so much better and they seem to be a lot better thought out cars. The user interface with the Hongqi is one of the worst I have ever <laughs> seen or ever tried to use. It is just masses of text. You have columns and columns of text. You have to choose this one, then choose that one, then choose that one. It's like, who, or who really thought out such a crazy system? I have no idea. I'd love to tell you you're wrong, but you're not. Um, it is a god-awful UI. Uh, yeah, it's bad. Uh, it took me forever to find out where the um, regenerative braking settings were buried in the menu. But um, you don't need those going to the golf course, that's all I'm going to say. Um, well, okay, so we got a vote for the Neo. We got a vote for the... Oh, so we two votes for the Neo. And I, actually, you know what, guys? I'm going to be honest. I, I'm going to vote for the Neo <laughs> because I think that... For the top range model, you get what really puts me over the top, really, because uh, I've said I love the interior, the the exterior styling. It's it's you know I can take it or leave it in terms of it's not 
amazing for me, but it's also not hard on the eyes. Um, but it's the Neo service. It's also the Neo battery swapping and stuff that's available. So I, I, I gotta go with, I gotta go with Neo. So that's one for Neo, which means one for the EHS nine, one for Neo and two for the hi fi mm -hmm. So our winner for today's video mm -hmm. is none other than Mark's vehicle, the hi fi -X. This is somewhat of a non-surprise because I'm pretty sure that I, I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned it specifically at the end of the EHS 9 review that I did, but I think I said like, this is not the car that I would buy in this price category, but we couldn't have two people representing the Hi-Fi X. Um, so I was the no. EHS 9 and I was proud to do it. Um, well, as I, as I said, I could understand completely why somebody would buy an EHS 9. It's, it's not a terrible car by no. any means. No. I just feel that the Hi-Fi X is better. Uh, I, I really have a soft spot for both of them. And I, I'm happy to see either of them on the road. Uh, ESA, I'm not as happy to see on the road simply because I see them all the time. Um, they're not as exciting. Um, but <laughs> that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much to uh, both of my guests, Mark and Elliot, for joining me. This video, um, our last video where we discussed the world's simplest and cheapest cars was about 47 minutes. And we somehow managed in just around 55 minutes to discuss some of the world's most ex like most complex and expensive uh, EVs on the other end of the spectrum. So I think we were highly effective today, boys. Good job. <laughs> thank you, thank you, for, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much, also to our audience, of course. Be sure to comment below. Which one do you guys prefer? Uh, EHS nine, Hi-Fi X, ES eight. Which one do you think is the best on all the categories that we have we have mentioned? We would really love to hear your thoughts. We also love to hear your thoughts on other debates, other topics that we can discuss. We do rely on you in the comments to give us ideas, and we really appreciate your input. Be sure to check these guys out on their various platforms. Both of them are on Twitter. Uh, Elliot, of course, on YouTube, and then Mark at his website. Also, check us out, um, Wheels Boy, um, in our Instagram and Facebook. We appreciate you giving us a subscribe or a follow. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in our next video.